there was a man, and he was bent over, and he was walking up backwards and forwards along this patch of pavement under a street light. And a lady came along, and she said, you seem to have lost something, can, can I help you find it? And he said, yeah, he said, I've lost my keys. And I've been looking, and, but I can't seem to see them. And she said, well, I'll help you. Let's look together, we'll find them. And so the lady joined the man, and they looked together. And after a while, the lady said, are you sure you dropped them here? Because we've been looking for ages, and we can't seem to see them. No, said the man. I didn't drop them here. I dropped them up that dark alleyway, but I can't see up there, so I thought I would look here. <laughs> Isn't that what we do sometimes? That we don't want to go into the dark places. My dark place, my darkest place, is around relationship and trust with woman. Because that was my story. That was my initial primary wound. And what I've realised is that is where the keys to my salvation and my liberation lie. When I keep going back and trying again and doing my best and facing the fear that if I open my heart, that it doesn't mean that I'm going to be left and abandoned. The truth is that the, the, the idea of those dark places is always worse than the reality. And the idea is always worse because of the stories that we tell ourselves. Associated with shame or guilt or not good enough or lo not being lovable or not being worthy. But when we dare to go into those places, miracles happen. That's what all the myths and legends are about. The Greek legends about all these monsters and battles. They're all the inner journey that we must go on. The dragons in those dark caves... That is where the treasure lies. But while we carry on pretending everything's fine and covering ourselves and busying ourselves with addictions and so on, then we never go there and we wear these masks. I'm cool, yeah, I'm good. When actually we're all a little bit lost and we all feel a little bit empty inside. A second step in making this transition is about love and acceptance of ourselves. Another short story for you. You may have heard it before, but I've changed the ending because I didn't think the ending was. Uh, I didn't think the ending was the ending. There's another bit. So there's a little boy, and he sat on his grandfather's lap, and he says, "Grandfather, sometimes it feels as if there are two wolves locked in combat inside me, and one." is a dark, jealous, angry sort of wolf. And the other one is kind and loving. But they get into these incredible fights. And Grandad, I, I'm, I'm scared sometimes. And I wonder, and, and I, I don't know which one will win. Which one do you think will win, Grandad? And the Grandad looked down to his son and he said, the one that you feed the most... Now, I think what he meant by that was the one that you give your energy to. If you give focus your energy on the, on the light, nice, happy, loving wolf, then the other one will not have as much strength. But I'm not convinced that that's just quite how it is. Because my experience is when I don't, when I don't give energy to my darker sides, my shadowy aspects, they just get louder and more aggressive and more vicious. What I found is that the best way to placate the darker aspects of myself is to love them and to accept them and to honour them. Because those bits are only angry and shouting and making a noise in our heads because they want some attention. They just want loving back to oneness, to the oneness that we were born as before we were taught to separate different aspects of ourselves. So this is some of the inner trails, the courage to go to those dark places and the compassion 
to love and accept all of ourselves.